It's a privilege to have you listening to me today as you're tuned in to Bloom Radio from wherever you are. Praise the Lord. My name is Jason Franklin Ochola, and I'm glad that you've joined me on this week's edition of the EBZ Devotion. Welcome. Someone ever shared with me a scenario about the way Christians ought to live life, and I'd like to share it with you right now. Picture with me that you live in a house, but it's, it's a bit run down and it needs proper repair from the roofing that's leaking to the plumbing and the electrical works, and you do not have the sufficient finances to help you take care of all this. Then out of the blues, someone walks up to you and tells you, Hey, friend, I'm going to take up the renovation of your house at my cost. And I don't want you to worry about what I'm going to do about it. I don't want you to worry about the cost. Just know that at the end of it, you have something amazing that you'll get back to and it will not have the troubles that it had before. But in the meantime, I'm going to take you to this five-star hotel and that's where you'll be staying, okay? Who would in their right mind decide not to take such an offer? Well, I know there are some few who'd question because we're living in weird times and some people's promises are not to be trusted, you know? Some are taken with a pinch of salt. But if this person has proven to you that they are genuine, would you not take the offer? So, right now in Kenya, one of the top hotels in the country is Kempinski Villa Rosa. So this guy takes you to Kempinski and at the, at the reception, he asks the receptionist to book you into the presidential, presidential, oh, into the presidential suite and signs a check. But you can tell that he has not written an amount. He hands over this blank check to the receptionist and tells them, whatever this person will need, whatever Jason will need, whatever Jill will need, whatever Jack will need, it's on my tab. The day I return, I will cover the entire cost. Then he lets you in and you start your time there. He's not told you how long it's gonna take, but he's left you there and he's telling you, I'm gonna come back and take you to your new home. When you move in day one, you're still uncertain about this thing that's going on because it's unlike someone to just pop up and do such a huge favor for you. So day one, you are there, you make your orders for food here and there, drinks here and there, but you're holding off on yourself so that you do not go overboard. And when you're ordering your food, even room service, you're questioning how much it's gonna cost. Because definitely, being a high-end hotel, it's not gonna come cheap. Here you are, you're ordering your food and the day passes by. You don't even go out of the room. You're still in awe, you're still in shock. Day two comes by and you get a call from the reception and they tell you, hey, you can go check out the rest of the establishment, go to the spa, go to the gym, go to the swimming pool, enjoy yourself. It's on the tab. You loosen up a bit and you say, okay, let me do this. And you go out, go to the spa, and you go full out. But you still have a lingering thought and say, well, that must have cost a lot. But because the tab is on someone else, I'll try and be a bit disciplined. Day three, you go to the gym and you ask for a, a tennis ball and you go with it to your room and start bouncing it about. You end up cracking a, a vase that's definitely expensive, right from what it looks like, a beautiful work of finesse that you just cracked and you call the reception and tell them, I'm afraid I've had an accident in the room and this, this and this has happened. Then the receptionist tells you, don't worry, it's taken care of. At this point, you will ask yourself, um, I'm at liberty to do some stuff. 
So the question is this. Are you going to continue living a disciplined life and staying within the boundaries, not going overboard? Or are you going to take this opportunity to try and break everything that's within your reach? Let's say you take option number two, that now you've gone full out and you want to enjoy life in here. You take all the orders up to your room, you use all the facilities in there, you break the expensive TV screen that's there, you break the glass, you jump on the bed and you break it. The day the gentleman who took this up on his tab comes back and he looks at the cost of putting you up in that hotel, in that presidential suite, when he comes back, will he be pleased with what he finds? My friend, that is the same thing that's happening to you and I as Christians at this very moment. Christ has gone back to heaven to prepare a place for us. And he's expecting you and I, while we are on earth, to live a life that is worthy of him. Not going about breaking everything that is within reach. He has put limits on us, not to restrain us, but to give us freedom and to ensure that we do not fall outside of his will, we do not fall in sin. Yet many of us today are living lives that are not exemplifying a Christ-like attitude, a Christ-like life. It is important that you and I live lives that are pleasing to Christ. Because he, he gave us the ultimate sacrifice once and for all, his life on the cross. How about you and I on this end live a life that is worthy of his calling, worthy of his sacrifice? So that someone else who looks at you will be drawn to Christ, not because of what you've done, but because of the change that Christ has brought about in your life. You see, brothers and sisters, when Christ left the disciples, he left them with this command, Go ye into the whole earth. Go ye into the whole world. Start from Jerusalem, go to Judea and Samaria and the rest of the world. Make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Until that day I will come back, and lo and behold, I am with you till the end of the age. He is coming back for us. The question is this, are we living a life that is pleasing to Him? Are we doing what He instructed us to do, to make disciples for Him? The Great Commission is the greatest instruction that Christ left us with. When He left, he told us, make disciples for me. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. What have you done about that? Have you stepped out of your comfort zone to go make a disciple, even one? Have you stepped out of your comfort zone to go share love with that fellow believer who needs it? What are you doing about the Great Commission? Or, huh, are you that wicked servant who is going about making life for his fellow servants tough? Jesus said in the book of Matthew that such servants, they'll be thrown out to the outermost darkness where there's gnashing of teeth. Yes, servants, but they are wicked servants. This is a message to the church. Are you a wicked servant? Are you that servant who's been given one talent and has hidden it, not using it to the glory of God? Or are you like, <laughs> I like this example. The book of Acts chapter 17 tells us that Paul arrived at a place called Berea and he went in and taught at the synagogue. Then the Jews there were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they received the words with all eagerness and examined the scriptures daily to see if those things were so. 
to verify if what Paul was teaching was correct? Or are you like the Athenians later in the same chapter who lived and would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new? <laughs> I tell you, in those times, social media is here and everyone is hooked on it. It's telling us something new. What's hot in town? Yet we do, we do not know how to read the word. We do not know how to break down the word. And because we don't know how to break down the word, we are not able to understand it. You see, the word of Christ, Simon Peter told Christ, your words are life. Where else would we go? And Christ's word is water that washes us, that purifies us. And because we are not pure, we cannot stand in front of people to go and share the word of Christ. Because we do not know the word of Christ. We do not have it in our hearts. The word tells us, let the spirit dwell richly in you. How else will the spirit richly dwell in you if you are not feeding your spirit man? Your spirit man is so famished, so hungry, so withered that all that is sent your way, the wrong and false doctrines of this world, the, 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 the new things that are happening in the world are all that is, that is carrying us about. You're not firmly rooted and established in the word of God. My friend, there's a greater call. There's a greater call for you. You can live in the moment, not by looking at the new things that are happening around you, but you can live in the moment by sharing God's word, sharing the, the gospel of God to the people who need it. Because one way or another, Christ is coming back. One day, the whole world will be evangelized and Christ will return. The question is this, are you going to be that servant who was used of God to spread this message? Are you going to be that servant who lived a life that is well-pleasing? Are you that servant who's going to take that talent that he was given and multiply it to the glory and honor of God? These are tough questions that you need to answer today, here and now. Because friend, I know you are looking around and you know that the times are unique. Our Savior is on his way back. It could take him 10 years. It could take him 30 to 100 years. It could take him one year. He is on his way back. Are you ready? Have you done what you've been called to do? It is important that you and I honor the great call. Not every other noise that is around. Find your footing right now, today, and make a decision to live for Christ. Make a decision to honor His instruction that He left us with. That He may come back and find a bride ready for Him to take back home. Father, in Jesus' name, let this word burn in the hearts of the listener right now and let it burn in their bones that they will not be able to settle until they do something about the Great Commission until they do something about the purposes that you called them forth to to perform here on earth until they live a life that is exemplary of you a life that is worthy of you that they will put aside every besetting weight and run this race in preparation for the day that you come to take us back home. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. I love you. See you tomorrow in the next edition of the EBC Devotion. <laughs>